Aloha. We are continuing in chapter 17 and we are going to look at free energy. So just something I want to kind of review and redefine. Um, in our last video, we talked about a spontaneous process. Um, and this is another phrase that is going to be used to mean spontaneous. Thermodynamically favored. All right, also product favored, but more often you'll see thermodynamically favored. So a spontaneous process we can also say is thermodynamically favored. Um, it still can be fast or slow, so we're still not thinking about kinetics, all right? Uh, and a process that is spontaneous in one direction, it's non-spontaneous in the opposite direction, all right? So in our picture here, the nail spontaneously rusting to remove that rust would be a non-spontaneous um, process. Again, the nail rusting would be thermodynamically favored, all right, product favored, that rust product would be favored. And to undo that rusting chemically, that would not be a thermodynamically favored uh, reaction. So now again, spontaneous versus non-spontaneous. This is something that the AP board, they use. Um, so it just comes up. But the big thing there, even when we say spontaneous or thermodynamically favored, we are not talking about the speed, all right? That will come up again and again, so just be careful with that. All right, so today we are talking about free energy. It is also referred to as Gibbs free energy, all right? So remember, if you do something amazing in science, your name may be part of a unit or an equation, so Gibbs free energy. So to, up to this point, we know that if the, uh, if the change in entropy is positive in the universe, then we have a spontaneous process. And we know the change in entropy of the universe is equal to the change in entropy of the system plus the change in entropy of the surroundings. We know how to look at the system. We're looking for things like the volume of the system. If the volume increases, then the entropy is going to increase. So we know how to come up with the change in entropy for a system. And we saw that the change in entropy for the surroundings is the negative delta H over T, all right? The negative of the change in enthalpy divided by the temperature, right? We know that the change in entropy for the surroundings has to do with the heat flow. So that's the only way delta S of the universe equaling delta S of the surroundings plus delta S of the system. That's the only way we have right now to determine if a process is spontaneous or thermodynamically favored. Gibbs free energy is gonna give us a new tool. So Gibbs free energy, it's gonna get the symbol G, and it equals H minus T times S. H again being enthalpy, and T being the temperature, S being the entropy. All right, so the heat content, the measure of the randomness. Now, this is defined for the system. So the Gibbs free energy of the system equals it, the system's heat content minus the temperature times the entropy of that system. We very rarely look at the individual enthalpy, right? We look at the enthalpy change and we very rarely look at the entropy. We look at the change in entropy. So we are gonna switch this. We're gonna bring in our deltas, all right? So we're gonna get delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. We are making an assumption that we are at constant temperature and we are at constant pressure, all right? T will never be zero, right? We won't reach absolute zero. Uh, so the delta G, it's gonna be equal to delta H minus T delta S. And this is for the system and it's gonna help us determine if the system is spontaneous or thermodynamically favored or not. So let's just start with that equation. Delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. All right, and let's divide everything by negative T. All right, we're gonna use this to derive a pretty important equation for us. We're dividing everything by negative T. All right, so we should see that the negative T delta S, when divided by negative T, the T's will cancel out, and it should become just positive delta S. All right, and we see that. So negative G over temperature equals negative delta H over temperature plus delta S, right, plus the entropy. Now this should look familiar. Negative delta H divided by temperature, we saw in the last video, 
is equal to the entropy of the change in entropy of the surroundings. All right, so now, all right, we have our initial entropy for the system in delta S. And because we have negative delta H over T, we have the entropy change for the surroundings. So negative delta G over T is actually equal to the change in entropy of the surroundings plus the change in entropy of the system, all right, which should again look familiar. That's equal to the change in entropy of the universe. So negative G divided by T, the, the current temperature, is equal to the change in entropy of the universe. And this is a way we can predict. We know that if the change in entropy of the universe is positive, then the process is spontaneous. Well, to make the left side of this equation positive, we're going to need a negative delta G. We're never going to have a negative temperature, right? We're always going to be in Kelvins. So if we have a negative delta G, when it gets multiplied by that negative sign, it'll be positive, and a positive delta S of the universe means spontaneous. So reactions are spontaneous when delta G is negative. Huge thing. Again, I'm going to repeat that. Reactions are spontaneous or thermodynamically favored when delta G is negative. All right, and again, we can calculate that. Calculating delta G is actually a pretty straightforward equation, the delta G equaling delta H minus T delta S. These are often given to us in a reaction, right? This is data that has been, been found in a lab, tabulated, right? We can look it up and we're given it. So in this reaction, we have the combustion of acetylene. We have delta H and delta S very easily. We can plug them in, all right? Delta G, H, we don't have to change at all, the negative 1238. All right, temperature has to be in Kelvin times delta S, right? So those Kelvin units, they will cancel. We're gonna get negative 1,209 kilojoules for the combustion of acetylene. That means that that reaction is product favored. It favors these products, all right? It is spontaneous. It is enthalpy driven. It is thermodynamically favorable, right? Because of that negative G, all right? So it's spontaneous, it's thermodynamically favored. It's product favored. All right. So, what I want you to think about is water in its solid form converting into water in its liquid form, right? Essentially, an ice cube melting. Well, for that process, delta H equals 6,030 joules per mole, and delta S equals 22.1 joules per Kelvin times mole. So if we use the formula delta G equals delta H minus T delta S, all right, I want you to pause here for a second and calculate delta G at negative 10 degrees Celsius, zero degrees Celsius, and plus 10 degrees Celsius. All right, keep in mind, temperature always has to be in Kelvin, all right, so that's going to be important. So make sure you convert these. And just think about it. Does ice melt at negative 10 degrees Celsius? Does it melt at zero degrees Celsius? And does it melt at 10 degrees Celsius? Your answer from this equation should sync up with the common sense for these. So take a second, do those calculations, all right? So at negative 10 degrees Celsius, you should be calculating a delta G of 217.7. All right, rounding is going to be fine, but about 217, a positive number. At negative 10 degrees Celsius, this is not a spontaneous process. All right, this is not thermodynamically favored. At zero, you should get a delta G of zero, all right, which will happen anytime, right, these processes are at like an equilibrium. All right, we will talk more about that. So, and then at positive 10, you should get a number around negative 224.3. Right, again, rounding is going to be okay, but you should be getting a negative number at positive 10. That means at positive 10 degrees Celsius, this process is spontaneous. It is thermodynamically favored. All right. So again, that's calculating delta G and interpreting what delta G means. All right. Very important skill that we need to have. All right. And this is going to be really the foundation. We know enthalpy. We've worked with entropy. And this formula, all right, free energy, it is going to put everything together. So this is going to be the foundation of everything else we see 
in this chapter 17 unit on spontaneity. All right. So now, as a reminder, we have this chart again. All right. Will something be spontaneous or not? All right. Um, we need to think about this chart is actually missing the delta H. So we'll go back. I just want you to think if delta H is negative and delta S is, neg is positive, excuse me, delta H negative, delta S positive, this will always be a negative value. This will always be spontaneous. If delta H is positive and delta S is negative, this will always be a positive value. The reaction will never be spontaneous, all right? And then if they are both positive or both negative, that's where temperature is gonna come into play. So we will see more examples of that in later videos, all right? But we have a foundation now for delta G. So we can use that, we can practice with that. And if you're looking in the textbook, we have a good summary of that chart on the table 17.4 on page 799, all right? And table 17.5 on page 800. So review those, all right? And that should help you understand free energy.